Hi, I'm Tony Richards, and today I'm going to debunk the Corvair myths. First of all, um, I want to talk about the, uh, the myth about the uh, Corvair throwing fan belts. This was true on the first year. Um, the uh, fan, Corvair would lose its fan belt. Um, this problem was fixed with uh, guides that they put on top of the engine in uh, it, uh, this was true with the first year. Uh, the problem was corrected uh, when they installed guides on top of the engine to keep the belts in place. The belt has twists and turns, runs from the top of the engine, then down pull it, two pulleys, and then around the back of the engine. So the belts are under a fair amount of stress. If you had an old belt, worn belt, or the wrong belt, or if it wasn't adjusted properly, yeah, the belt's going to come off. Um, I drove Corvairs for 10 years when I was younger, um, from the time I was 17 till the time I was 27, um, almost daily. And in that 10 year time, I only lost a fan belt one time, and that was due to the belt being old. Another myth is uh, engine fires. The, uh, if, you, if you have a gas leak, um, yeah, it could cause an engine fire, but the uh, gas lines in the Corvair were metal, you know, so if uh, you had a, a, a bad connection, it could make a gas leak. But, you know, if you're driving along, you smell gas, pull over. You know, and, and see what's wrong. Have it fixed. But, you know, Corvair engines just don't catch on fire for no reason. It would have to be a gas leak. But that happens in any, that could happen in any car. Um, there was also a uh, myth about uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Well, it's, it's uh, partially true if the the heat, heater hoses that take the hot air right off the bottom of the engine and into the passenger compartment if with age those hoses can deteriorate and if they aren't replaced the holes get bigger and bigger and yeah it could get some exhaust fumes into the car and possibly carbon monoxide poisoning but it boils down to maintenance you know you, you, like any car you need to check things periodically and maintain them you smell something funny check the heater hoses probably the most common problem with the Corvair is oil leaks so I'm I'm gonna say it's not exactly a myth but the, the problem what caused the oil leaks was the rubber seals in various parts of the engine uh, most commonly the push rod tube seals o-rings the rubber would get uh, old with age, it get hard and crack and leak oil. So we uh, solved that problem by uh, replacing the rubber seals with this uh, space age rubber that will stand up to the heat and not crack. They say the Corvair is the most misunderstood car in history. Well, that very well may be true. The biggest myth is uh, Corvairs rolling over. Corvairs just don't flip over. The uh, rear swing axle suspension in the early models was also shared with Pontiac Tempest. The first Pontiac Tempest from 61 to 63 had the same rear axle setup as the Corvair, but you never hear about Pontiac Tempest flipping over. Also a Volkswagen Beetle and Porsche had the same setup too. But a young lawyer, uh, Ralph Nader, uh, wanted to publish a book about the built-in dangers of the American automobile. The Corvair, being the most unconventional American car at the time, was an easy target because of the rear engine. There's, uh, I think, eight chapters in, in that book. I have a copy somewhere, but I looked for it probably packed away somewhere but I think there's eight chapters one of the chapters was kind of interesting it said uh, the excessive ornamentation of the 57 Chevrolet Bel Air was a hazard to 
pedestrians. Only the first chapter of Ralph Nader's book was devoted to the Corvair, uh, primarily the rear suspension setup. Um, to give Ralph Nader credit, uh, um, he did have a diagram in his book and it showed the difference between the early model Corvair swing axle and the later model Corvair rear suspension where um, it was redesigned. It didn't make the car a little more stable. Only the first chapter of Unsafe at Any Speed was devoted to the Corvair's handling characteristics. But as I mentioned, the same rear suspension setup was shared by the, the Pontiac Tempest and was similar to a Volkswagen or a Porsche of that era. Um, he, he had a diagram in the book that showed the difference between an early model Corvair rear suspension and a late model Corvair rear suspension. But bottom line is Corvairs just don't flip over. If you're driving recklessly, like an idiot, and you run off the side of the road or jerk the wheel, yeah, any car is going to flip over. Um, so the um, one, one thing that, that about the Corvair is the um, requirement that there's 11 pounds difference in tire pressure between the front and rear. Typically, I run 20 pounds in the front tires, 32 31 or 32 pounds in the rear tires to make up for the difference the lower tire pressure in the front uh, puts more rubber on the road and the, the higher tire pressure in the rear helps support the little extra weight of the engine in the rear uh, but this was the factory recommendation and it there's a little sticker inside the glove box that says this is important to uh, proper vehicle handling. But if you took your car in for service at the gas station, they check your air, they'd pump 32 pounds of air and all the tires all the way around the car. Or if somebody uh, didn't know what they were doing at the dealer, same thing would happen. So with, with that, with 32 pounds all the way around, it would create what we call oversteer and make the front front of the car really light and hard, harder to control. So that was um, an issue. But when I started driving Corvairs, I was told, but keep the air pressure in the front lower. One of the things Ralph Nader advocated was the establishment of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The irony is after three years of government investigation, the first thing the agency did as their official act was issue a report in 1972 stating that the Corvair was no less safe than any other car of its era. There were cases of Corvairs rolling over, but I believe it was due to driver error, not the car. If you're driving along highway speeds and your right side wheels run off the edge of the pavement and you jerk the steering wheel to correct it, any car could flip. But because of the uh, rear engine layout, it made the Corvair an easy target to, to say it was unsafe at any speed when, it, when it's not. So don't believe the myth. If you have a Corvair, maintain it, enjoy it, drive it. There were lawsuits against General Motors about the Corvair rolling over in an accident. One car accident, Ralph Nader called it. And uh, it, again, it's um, due to driver error, you know, uh, over inflating the tires, perhaps, uh, jerking the wheel at high speeds, you know, losing control of the car. But I, I maintain that that could uh, happen to any car. But the Corvair was an easy target because of the rear engine layout. If you have a Corvair, just maintain it. Check your tire pressure. Enjoy the car. And don't pay any attention to the miss. Well, thanks for watching.